I'm Karen from Karen Davis Sugarcraft. Welcome to Mold Magic on Cake Flicks Part 6. That's gone very quickly getting up to number 6. I hope you've seen some of the other videos that we've done and enjoyed them. Today I'm going to do a cake for a baby or a small child for suitable for a christening or a birthday even a baby shower, you, know, you can adapt them for different things, different occasions. The main feature of the cake will be the large teddy bear mould. Now I'm not just going to mould this and put it on the cake, I'm going to make him fluffy and dress, well the boy and girl, dress them both in knitted, little knitted outfits, which I think you'll find quite cute and easy to do when I show you how. So I'm going to use our sugar paste. This is our sugar paste, okay? We do marshmallow or vanilla flavours. Okay, if you haven't got this, you can use others, but you need to add Tylo or CMC to them to firm them up. It's usually about a 5ml teaspoon to 225 grams of paste. Knead it in and just leave it for an hour or two to firm up. So the first thing I'm going to do is put corn flour into the mould. Just pat it in, make sure it's everywhere. Tap out so there's not too much. Now I'm going to do a different colour snout for the teddy bear here. I'm going to put a paler piece of paste into here, okay? So I've got a little piece here. I've just got to make sure that fits in nicely. Yeah, and doesn't come over the edge because then it would, you know, you'd see it in places where you don't want to see it. Press really hard to make sure you get the teddy bear's nose that it goes down deep into his nose. Now I am going to put a tiny amount of glue on this paste very very thinly because I don't want it to weep out in, you know into the edges and make this paste stick in the mold. Now I've coloured this with dark brown sugar flare dark, dark brown paste colour. Before I put it in I'm just going to make it nice and smooth. I think that's a little bit big. Let's take some off. I've made this teddy hundreds and thousands of times, but still can't remember how much I need. I think that's probably not enough now, but I'll show you how to add some to it and how to take paste off if you've got too much. Okay, so I make a long sausage of paste to put in. If you feel at all sticky, it's a very warm day here today. If you feel sticky, just put some corn flour or icing sugar onto your fingers before you press into the mold. Now this one hasn't got quite enough, so, Always push the paste to the edges and then add your extra paste into the centre. Okay, and then the same here with the arms, push into the arms. And you see it's gone up to the edges everywhere. Same this side, sticky again, up to the edges. And then I can add extra paste along the back here to fill him, fill him out. Okay, so he's ready, he or she is ready to come out now. There's enough up there. Okay, now there's no need to put it in the freezer or anything. As long as your paste is right, this will come out beautifully. You just press on the back and there he is, teddy number one. So I'm going to pop him onto this sponge pad and then repeat the process for teddy number two for the, for the friend. Plenty of corn flour, tap out. Right, the snout. So make sure it's nice and smooth. There's no creases in it before you put it in. That's probably slightly too big. So I'm just gonna take that out, take a little piece off. Make sure it's nice and smooth again. If there is a crease, I can see a tiny one there. I'm going to keep that at the back. So it's in, press really hard. So it goes down deep into the nose. Then the tiny little amount of glue, I'm brushing as much off the brush as possible. And then the sugar paste. Now this time I'll put too much in so I can show you what happens then. If you're making a lot of teddy bears, you could weigh them. I think on our leaflet for this, we do give you the weight of the paste to put in. So we make a smooth sausage, put that onto the bear. So I'll start by putting the paste into his ears. It's going in for the neck, so we push in there. And into the arms. I can see a bit of a crease on the side there, so I'm being careful that I don't push that in. Now push the paste down. 
So there's too much as you can see there. I'm just going to push to one side like this. Pinch and push till it's very thin and then just take it off with your thumb. Okay, so make sure it's not going over the edge anywhere and it's flat and level with the mould at the back. So that's ready to come out now. And I just turn him over like before, press on the back of the mould and there's Teddy number two. Okay, we'll get rid of that paste out of the way. Now, I'm going to dress the bears. So when I look at these, I think their feet are in the way a little bit. So I'm going to, I might actually dust the powder colour onto the feet first before I do anything else. A piece of kitchen paper. I'm going to take the feet off. I'm going to remove the feet. But firstly, I just take some pink powder rub it into the kitchen paper and then brush onto the feet. It's better, like there, there isn't quite enough, it's better to add it slowly, little by little, and build up the colour rather than put too much on at once, because once it's on, it's not coming off. Okay. So, keep adding till you're happy with it. So that's his feet done. I'll carry on do the rest. Paws on his arms. And that last one. Then on his cheeks. I'm going to do the cheeks, the pink on his snout rather than on his face here because uh, I'm going to snip that with the scissors in a few minutes. So we don't want um, the pink there. Okay. So, oh, his ears, nearly forgot his ears. I need a little bit more powder, I think, there. Just a touch of pink into each ear. There we go. And then, because there's hardly any colour on my brush, I can take off any extra corn flour that I can see that I don't want. Okay, that's ready. So now, I'm going to take a polythene bag and remove the feet and put them into the bag. So you can use scissors and what I do, I just lay the scissors on and snip in as much as possible before using a palette knife. I'm trying to do this so you can see easily, but it's tricky. <laughs> So there we are, that's nearly off. Actually, I'm just leave it. I don't need the palette knife. I can just keep snipping inside to take off. So there's one foot off. Doesn't matter what that looks like, it's going to be covered. Then the second foot. And don't just go from one side, work your way round the bear to remove. Okay. And that one off. And the second bear. Try and be a bit quicker now on this one. Don't want you to get bored watching the same thing four times. <laughs> there we go. And then this way. I'll attack both feet while from the same direction while I'm uh, there. Make it a bit quicker. There's another one off. Oh, just knocked his face there. That's okay. That's it. Four feet off. Now, I'm going to put these feet or paws into this bag. Just to keep them dry because I'll snip them when they come out, when I'm putting them back on the bear. So I'll fold that over and just push them out of the way for a minute. Right, so now... Um, I'm going to dress the bears and decorate their faces and everything, get them ready. So the first thing I want to do is start to snip around their heads. So we can start right at the top of the head. Now these, I'll show you two different types of scissors. These are curved cuticle nail scissors, okay? Manicure scissors. Most of you will have these already at home probably. So give them a wash, good wash, and you can use them. <laughs> Or 
What I like to use, you see here that I find them a little bit tricky, a little bit awkward. We've got these other scissors. These are we call tweezer scissors. You see the action they've got? So much easier. And I can get finer snips using these than I can with the others. And I do get quicker. As you get used to doing it, you do get a little bit quicker. So I'm going to do the bear's ears now, round the ears. And I'll explain, I'm just going to do this and then I'll explain about the angle of the scissors and cutting. Because it, until you get that right, the fur, can, the fur can look a little bit odd. I want the fur to be cut in a, in a curve like this, okay? So I've started here going down and then as I go round, the scissors I'm moving, move the bear. I'll leave a little bit of space there to do some eyelashes. I want to paint some eyelashes on him, him or her. Now the blade is, the it's the tip of the blade. It isn't pointing down like this because you'll just get like a little V. You won't get that long V, see? So it's the end of the scissors, the tip is lying flat. Okay, you want it as flat as you can without those points sticking up. Do you, do you understand if you, is that explaining it properly? Um, you know, that, that now is as flat as it will go. And the angle as well, you couldn't probably do it any, uh, any more than that. So I turn the bear as I go to snip the fur. Okay. And then I need to turn him round to start the other side. Now you'll see this side better. So you see, on there and snip. And use your scissors to push that fluff up on top of his head. I mean, some teddy bears I do, I will just snip the top of his head so the top of his head is fluffy, which looks really, really cute if you're in a bit of a hurry. Okay, so we go down again and round. I'll come back to his ear in a second. I always find it easier as well to snip one way than the other. I don't always... <laughs> It's funny, it feels very strange, but you always either prefer snipping on the left side or the right side. But this sort of technique, you, a lot of you will have seen it before, um, for snipping Christmas trees and hedgehogs. Now, the, both bears have got sleeves on their clothes, so I'll probably just snip around, or oh, nearly forgot his ear, didn't I? I'll go back for his ear. Um, I'm just going to snip around the bottom there, like that. Okay, and that side as well. If you find things like this take you a while and you don't want to rush, just put a tiny, tiny amount of treks over where you're going to snip because it will stop the paste drying out too quickly. So I'm just gonna go back to his ears and snip around the ears. Okay, and the next thing I've got to remember is the arms to cut under the arms because when I dress the bear I want the clothes to go around his body so just cut there with the knife and lift the arms up ready so now I've got to do exactly the same to this bear here okay so we'll snip like this but it's great for all any animals you do this sort of thing you can see um there's so many different things you could do with these and for birds as well they're, they're great to do all sorts so i'll try and go as quickly as i can now because you've just seen this i'll do down here while i'm here but you see you can do tiny little snips or bigger it's up to you you know how you want the fur to uh, to look go around his ear and I'm going to show you what happens if you make a mistake in a second when I get back around to uh, the other side of his head I will need to lift that up where I've snipped as well now if you snip and quite often you'll snip by mistake and snip part you know snip something off so let me just fix sort out the top of his head there yeah if you do some Let's see, try and make a mistake. If you do this and you snip off, don't worry about it. You can smooth it a little bit and then just go over it again and you won't notice. It'll be fine. Okay, so we're nearly done now. I think 
once you know, once I started doing this, nothing is uh, smooth now. Everything gets snipped, so the fairy, every uh, animal that make, and the same on the arms again. Snip, snip, and his ear to finish. Okay, and just round. And I'm going to finish there and we'll go to the ad break and we'll come back to do the teddy bear's face and put some clothes on them. black pearls they are great they're the right size eyes for these two bears so if I just put a little bit of glue saves all the painting I'm still going to paint the nose so I'll be showing you how to paint the nose I'm just putting a tiny tiny dot of edible glue or water onto each eye and then we take this is where they roll away <laughs> one eye and press in Ooh, hard to get hold of. Two, and press in. Three. And the last one, four. Oops, nearly. Now pressing them in, um, if you use something like a, a tool, it's much easier than putting your finger in there and pressing and then ruining your fur. Okay, so they look quite cute, don't they? And they've got a nice natural shine as well on them, so they look really good. So now I'm just going to paint in the nose and the eyes. So here I've got a little bit of lemon extract. This has got alcohol in it, so I'll put a little bit on a paint palette. So it does dry very quickly. It smells very nice. <laughs> I'm just going to mix it on the lid there and then paint his nose. I think that needs a little bit more powder. And just paint that in and the same over here. And then I need a very, very fine brush to paint the eyelashes. So this is size 10 knots. I've used follow around the top of the eye and flick out about three times, two or three times. There's the eyelashes. I never do a lot of eyelashes, only ever two or three. Now I need to turn the bear round to make it easy for myself. I can't paint the other way, so two, three. It's just getting a little bit dry, so a little bit more. Just move him slightly out of the way for this one. One, two, three. There we are, it's better. Just to go over that one a little bit. Right, the clothes now. Need to move this out of the way and start to make the clothes. So what I'll do, I think I'll start with the boy because he takes, well, they probably both take about the same time, actually. I was going to say he takes a bit longer, but I don't think he does. So I'm going to use our knitted mould. Let's see our knitted mould here. And I've got a rolling pin that's narrower than the mould, so I can roll the paste really thinly. 
because if you're dressing them with clothes, you don't want it to be too thick. So start to roll out the paste before I put it into the mold to make it easy for myself. Okay, and then some corn flour into the mold. Pop the paste on and then roll and press very firmly. So you can see the pattern of the knitting showing through. Okay, you can just see there the dimples. Turn that over, peel it away. Now I want a straight line. They're going to look like they're shorts he's wearing. So I want sort of a straight line across. If you follow the pattern, that's quite easy. And what I'll do is bring him back over. You lay this over the bear. So you think, yes, his waist would be about there. And then I take my Dresden tool and mark where I want to cut the paste. So you see, I've pushed it right into in there like that. So I know now where to cut it when I take it off and it should fit in perfectly. So we go around the cutting wheel. This is a PME cutting wheel. And then we put some glue over the bear or water. Oh, nearly did up the top. <laughs> right around the sides as well, because you want it to tuck in to the sides. Put that over. Never press this in with your fingers. Always use your tool, use your Dresden tool to push it in. Otherwise you end up no knitting on, no knitted pattern, you just go flat. Okay, just pushing that right in. And then I want a piece of white now for his top half. So I get some white paste. Oh, it's here out, lost it then. <laughs> so again, we roll into here, put some corn flour in the mold. Start to roll out. Pop that in and press firmly. Now it's only a small piece, a small strip across the top there. So again, cut a straight line across. And then if you put it onto the bear, let me turn him round so you can see. If I put that over the bear like this, I can use the Dresden tool again to see Sorry, my hand's in the way. I'm just pushing in there like that. So I know where to cut the strip, how big it needs to be. And then I'll put it back on to do the sides as well. So if we say across here, I know that's far too big, so I'm going to cut some off already. If you lay that back over him, you can then see where to cut using your tool. Take that off and trim some glue down the sides and pop that back on and push it in under his arms. Let me just see round here. I think I just went cut it a bit wrong, but it just tucks in anyway. It'll just press in. Okay, now don't worry too much there under his chin because he's going to have a little bow under there. So he needs white sleeves now. So it is, the sleeves are quite easy. Again, you need to just cut some little pieces. I might just cut a strip now out of this. And small pieces to lay on his arms to see how big they need to be. Again, with the Dresden tool. So that's about the right width, actually. But I know I need to cut like this here to make that one fit. I'll just take a little piece off the top because I think that will fit pretty much, yeah. While that's off, I mean, you can, if you want to, just lay it on top of another piece of knit and just cut that as well. Because they should, the arms are pretty much the same size so it should fit on the other side as well so if i just put the glue under here around his arm pop that over use the tool to 
press down and in and then put glue again against his body and push that in again use your tool to press the paste down and in and the same with this arm some glue glue on his body put the paste over and use the Dresden tool to push in okay now he just needs two little straps to go over his shoulders and if you want to you can put a band of knit around his waist as well so I'm just going to cut two straps from here one two I think one would probably do both sides actually and then measure what I need so it's here to cut here because you'll have little white buttons on the uh, strap so I'll pop that on and then the other piece and we measure it again and cut off and glue you can either put the glue onto your strap or onto the bear whatever you prefer there we go and again use your tool to press in where you need to okay and then he can have a little bow on there i think it'd look nice with a blue bow wouldn't it so i'm just going to take some of the paste and take our bow mold now what you can do these are bows but you can make them look like a dicky bow you can just do the top of the mold so i think that's what i'll do with him i'm just going to put some um corn flour across that and then just put the paste in take the excess off let's just make sure i've pressed firmly take that off again and then take that out there we go now to make it look more dicky bow like just push it a little bit each side because it was never wasn't really designed as a dicky bow but it does look quite cute so now put some glue across here on his neck and pop the bow on under there and then again like i say never press in with your fingers always use your dresden tool to push anything yeah, there we go. So he's just missing his feet now and his buttons. Okay, so we'll finish there and we'll come back to quickly show you the girl and finishing off this little boy. braces so this is the baby button mold and you see there's a very tiny tiny button um, now my hands are very hot and sticky so it's not the best combination but if I just roll a little ball I'm just gonna put some extra corn flour on it there and take put that on I'm putting corn flour on my finger to press it in because it's so sticky that's okay now so as you see that is so light it doesn't just fall out like a lot of the paste from our molds so what i do is pull it back you can see there it's not stuck put it down and just flick a little bit and it'll oh shoot out sorry you missed that it went rather quickly across the table but that's how small that button is it's really tiny so i'm going to pick it up on the knife and to bring teddy bear back over and just put a little bit of glue on his straps there, each side, and then push it off. And like I say, don't use your fingers if you can help it with these things. So there's one button and there's another one I made during the ad break. There we go. 
and they should stay stay put there so he's nearly finished just needs his feet on so now i'm going to show you the girl teddy's dress i've already molded the knit to put on her now i know it's it's probably about it's probably quite big so we'll just take that piece away and the same as the teddy before as the little boy put the paste over but remember this time it's up to her chin and then mark where you're going to cut you push that in so you know where to cut when that comes off okay so i've got that mark round at the dresden tool I take it off and then cut out so follow that line round down here now i forgot to mark accurately under her chin so if i just pop that back on make sure it's, oh, it is right it's in the right place it's okay okay so now i'm going to just brush the back of this with glue this time spread it out well right up to the edge and then put that over her i broke my own rule and forgot and pressed it with my fingers <laughs> so push it in with your tool to make sure it's fits okay now her arms she wants little sleeves for her arms so if i just cut again a little strip here take that off now i know it's going to be at an angle so we'll do that and then i'm just going to use the wheel to mark where to cut that's one sleeve and then the second sleeve And to make that look, you know, really pretty and girly, I'm going to put a little frill on it. So if I take a piece of white paste, okay, just put some corn flour down. It's a little bit sticky. And then I'm just going to roll that flat, nice and thin. Whoops. Okay, the thinner it is, the better it will frill. A lot of people are a bit scared of doing it too, too thin. They think of the thicker paste will give a better frill, but it really isn't. So this is a gem veining tool. I think it's tool number 12, PME sell them. So I'm just going to roll that along here and you see what happens to the paste? It's thinning it out and frilling it. So always do it on the edge, never across the whole thing because that will just stretch out the paste. Okay, so there you've got a nice frill till it ripped. <laughs> so if I take that off and then look at the sleeve. So it's going to be like there. And then this one will be here. Take that away. So. If I glue across here, across here, put the sleeve back on, back on, press it down with the tool, always the tool, and then onto your bear. So lift your arms up well out the way, glue on the sides as well, and then pop the sleeves on. I'm using the tool to push them in and close her arms down, press that down. Okay, and the second sleeve. And then I need another frill actually for her neck. Forgot about that, I should have done it a little bit longer. So that's that should be plenty big enough for her neck by the time I roll it. straight. I'm going to frill it first and then trim it. I think that'll be easier to do. It's a very tiny piece. So if I just roll across, there we go. And then we'll trim that nice and neat. So we'll just leave a tiny straight piece there. 
if you wanted to you could put little stitch marks on it actually like this cross with the the other end of the um dresden tool as a little stitch wheel so that's ready to go onto her neck i'm just going to check the size before i glue that on perfect that was lucky <laughs> so just put some glue here pop that in place and get this dresden tool again to push that in okay and there's a little frill on her neck I mean, you can use this to lift the frill a little bit if you want to. But that's, uh, that's quite nice. So they're both ready now to have their feet on. So what you do with the feet, if I just get them out of the bag. Okay, if you take each foot and snip around here. It's easier to do them in your hand. Unless you've got very hot, sticky hands like I have at the moment. <laughs> just snip around like this. That, oh, see that one came off, so just go over it. There we go. If your paste feels sticky, just put a little bit of uh, cornflour on it. And again, you can lift these up. Lift the fluffy bits up if you want to. Yeah, see how sticky, it's because my hands are a bit um, sticky. The paste is now sticky. I'm going to put some cornflour on my finger, on my hands before I do the next one. So that's ready to go on here. Stuck to my thumb. <laughs> yeah, I just need to check that was level. Right, so a little bit of cornflour on my hands before I hold this next one. And the same again. Just start to snip around. Oh, that's the bottom of the foot. This was the top. There we go keep snipping them off don't I <laughs> I think it's just when you if you don't quite get the angle right they just snip off quite easily but these teddies are so popular another really popular one I do is a teddy for Christmas so you do this in red you can do a lovely little red suit put a black belt around his middle you get the idea and then of course the hat Santa hat on there we are so luckily, here's two I made earlier. Put these on the little boy, on a little friend. One, two. Okay, so really now they should be left to dry for a little bit. Okay, before you attach them to the cake. The next thing to do is to make the church, to mold the church. So we've got um, the mould for that. I'm just going to put these to one side and get the church mould. This is our church, well, it's our winter village mould, but I'm going to use the church of it. So it's not just a Christmas mould, it's great for weddings, baptisms, christenings, whatever you want. Okay, so I'll tap that out so it's not too much. And then I'm going to mould the church. Again with our paste. Now because this is standing up on the top of the cake you might want to add some Tylo or CMC to your paste to make it nice and firm so it dries nice and firm. So we just need that to get it nice and smooth and that's ready to go in to the mould. So flatten it out so it's easy, pop it in and start to push into the mould work your way up into the steeple there we go nearly there press hard firmly over the cross i'm just a little bit sticky there so i'm just going to put a little bit of cornflour on and take off the excess with my thumb just tidy that up it still looks a little bit bumpy there so i'm just going to take a bit more paste off in the corner and that's ready to come out now so we just turn it over bend the mold peel out and there's our church ready for this is going to be on the top of the cake so i'm going to leave that to dry we'll go to the ad break and then we'll come back and i'll show you how to finish off the church and put the cake together
Hi, welcome back to part four, the grand finale to finish off this cake. So first of all, I'm going to just paint the church now. It's dried, so it'll stand up. Now I'm just going to paint the windows in. I'm using gold powder. It's rainbow dust, metallic golden sands. And to get in the corners, because the windows are quite deep, I turn the church round to get the brush in rather than going like this, you know, and getting it up the sides where you don't want it. So even here, these tiny ones as well, you put the colour in and then turn it to push it into the corners to make it easy for yourself, okay? And then the cross at the top, I want to be gold as well. And make sure you go up, down the sides there as well to get the colour all over, okay? And that's the, the gold. So I'm not going to do all of it because you don't want to see me repeating myself over and over again. Um, now we've got some silver for the roof or the edges here. These look nice with a nice silver paint on them. Now this colour is called Rainbow Dust Metallic Light Silver. And that goes above the windows and round the door, etc. So up here as well. Down the sides, don't forget, underneath, on top, everywhere. And then round the door as well. Round here. Then I've used some grey, just plain grey instead of the silver to mark some brickwork on the church. So here we've got some grey, which I'll just mix a little bit of grey powder. And use a very, very thin, thin paintbrush for this. And just paint some lines across randomly and then down. It's drying very quick because it's so warm. Just to mark some brick patterns. You'll see it better when I bring in the one that's completely finished. You'll see it much clearer than I'm doing now. And then I've also put grey onto like the window frames across here down the centre and round the edges of the window as well. I think that just makes them stand out a little more than they do without. Down there and across. And then just underneath as well, underneath here. So you do that on all, all, of, the door, all of the windows and then for the main the door here, you can either do it gold, paint it gold as though it's open, or put a line down the centre and then I put like a little little gold dot for door handles each side. So you carry on with that until you have your church. Okay, so I'm going to put that over with the teddy bears now. That's finished. Okay, I'm going to put that over there, out of the way. And then the other thing you need to do for this cake is when you, you can mould some knit, some of the knit, and then cut out some hearts using a heart cutter. This is the side decoration I'm going to show you in a minute for one of the tiers on the cake. Okay, so if I just move all of this out of the way and bring over the cake, and I'll show you where I've got to so far. Now, we've got a three tier cake. I've already embossed the board and the top tier here with um, the lettering and the numbers. I've used sweet stamp here for the board, 
the bottom for the names. I've left one to show you how to uh, paint that in. Okay, so we've got the letter R there. If I just get a piece of paste to take out the R. So you use a ball of paste to take the letter out, which I'm not doing very well now. <laughs> they came out easily before. Let me put it in front of me. There we are. Just the angle, I think. So you put your, your lettering on the board and just press them gently. You want to be able to just see the outline of the letter. Okay. And then you can paint in the uh, powder colour. So I've got the gold. Yeah. And then just use your brushes to paint in. This is sort of a thicker brush. You can use a thinner one. But I'm just going to stick with this to be quick for now. If it looks too pale, go over it again. You don't want it to go too deep into your sugar paste because then you end up painting up the sides as well and it goes over or whatever. So that's um, the names there. If it dries too pale, go over it again. And then on the top tier here, I've used a sugar press stamp for the date. So you can put the date of the occasion, the birthday, you know, whatever you want. It's a nice, easy, quick way to do some nice, neat lettering. Okay, and then the bottom tier here was just showing you the heart that I've cut out. I'll put some more on to show you. Let's move things out of the way. Okay, so it's pink next, luckily. <laughs> now, because this is still soft, because the heart is still soft, I can use edible glue. If the heart was dry and the cake, the sugar paste had dried over the surface, you would need to use royal icing, most probably. It sometimes depends on the weight of the piece you're putting on. Okay, put that on. And again, just press gently, not too, too hard. You can mark out with a strip of greaseproof paper exactly the spacing and the height so you get them you know if you're not very good at doing it by eye you can mark it out first before you put the hearts on so you end up at the back i always start at the back work my way around with them so you know you can end up at the back with the right size gap to fit your last heart in or whatever so i just carry on with that right the way around now i'm going to show you the shell border okay now this isn't um, royal icing. This is our mould, our piped shell border mould. And I'm going to show you how to use this. It's a very quick way. I designed this, I brought this out when I used to teach cake decorating. And a few times some when I taught royal icing, piping, a few ladies said they struggled with their hands, you know, with the, the finer things, with piping or whatever. So I thought, a mould would be quite useful. So I've just rolled a very, very thin piece of our sugar paste. And don't forget, if you haven't got ours, you need to add Tylo or CMC to your paste to firm it up so it works. And you can see the way I'm doing this, I'm sort of going like this from side to side and down into the mould. And what that does, it cleans. If I do this, you see what happens. It spreads over the sides. You don't want that. You, you want to clean up the edge as you go along. So you're pushing it in from the sides and down into the mould. It tidies up the edge as you go. And that will come out very easily. You can see it's not stuck, okay? So I just turn it over and you see that it's falling out already. I'm just bending that back so it comes out, okay? And that's the most difficult one because it's the smallest. So that was quite easy. And now I'm going to attach to here. So I just need to pull the cake over to attach this. And we'll do, where are we? Yes, the bottom tier, it can go on here. So I've got some edible glue. We can attach it with glue or royal icing. But like I say, it, because it's soft, it will attach easily. So it's going to overlap the last shell and then come round here. And it's not too scary to handle it either. Everybody thinks it's going to break and, you know, and it isn't. So we just put overlap there. I'm at a very strange angle to put this on, but I'm just about doing it. There we go. And that's on. There we go. 
So that's a nice, easy finish. Saves making up royal icing, whatever. Okay, so I don't want to move this about too much now because I'm going to start to put the church on and the teddy bears. Um, so I don't want to be moving it around too much. Now, what else? Oh, yes, right. When the church goes on top, I want to put some um, plants around. I'm going to show you an easy way to put plants onto um, onto your cakes. This was something that I was taught years ago when I first started cake decorating. So if you take a sieve, and this is a soft sugar paste. It's not my sugar paste. My sugar paste is firmer than this. This is your normal shop-bought sugar paste. I'm going to put that onto the sieve and start to press. I'm going to put some cornflour on the table so I can put that on my fingers, otherwise it will just stick to me. That's quite a, a large sieve, but you see what happens. You push the paste through and then you take it off on your knife and you've got sort of a plant effect there. I'm actually thinking that does look a bit too, um, too thick. I'll just see if I've got another sieve anywhere handy. A fine one, slightly finer. It is a little bit, yes, so I'm going to do those again. But at least you could see clearly with that how, uh, how it comes out. So cornflour on my fingers, press. Now I'll probably think this is too fine. <laughs> no, that looks nicer. That does definitely look nicer, doesn't it? So what you do, you push it through as much as you want. This is great for making bobbles on snowman's hats. There's, again, all sorts of different things you can do. There, you've got a nice little plant. So I'm going to use that later, put it on later. Now, if you want flowers on your plants, you can do this. You take some little pieces of pink first, like this. Oh, see, I'm so sticky, I <laughs> can't get it off my fingers and then some green behind it. So make sure it goes over the edges and then making sure my fingers aren't sticky again. And then you press again. And what happens is you get the pink coming through first and then the green. Clever, isn't it? Do you like that? And then cut off. So you've got a flowering plant. <sighs> I'll do one more just to show you. The nice colours. I mean, if you're very clever, you can do something like this. You could put one piece in actually, without sticky fingers. Two. Three. You could have green in between them. <laughs> oh, there's a green. A bit more. And push. Okay, so there you see, you've got a few different areas of flowers there on that plant. And I'll put that down there. So I know it's gone upside down. That's it now. So I'm going to attach everything to the cake now. Somewhere I've got, yes, a piping bag. So first of all, I'll put the church on. I just need to look at it so I can see where it is to put the church in the centre. Now it's quite a good shape this to attach because it's it's nice and flat. And then I want my plants. I'm going to put them in front of the windows here and here. So I've just put a little bit of icing there. Take the knife and lift up the plant. Pop that one there. I'm going to adjust it with the Dresden tool in a minute. And we'll have the white one over here. So if you want to press it down or in, you can just do this and the same here. Okay, how does that look? I'll sort of adjust it later. That's okay. Oh, the church is just falling forward. I said I didn't want to move it about much um, because that would happen, but it should be okay. Okay, so now I want to add the teddy bears. So I just want to look where to put them. I know we haven't got a good view of it at the moment, um, but I just want to pipe on some royal icing. So we'll put L Lottie, the names are Lottie and Oscar, which just happen to be my grandchildren's names. Now I'm going to put some icing. I'll probably lift her arms up to put some icing behind them. 
I'll turn it round as soon as I possibly can. There we are. I'm going to put some icing behind her arms. And the other one, just so we don't have any accidents. And then we just have our little boy to put on next to her. I might have to move them slightly, I don't know. I'll put some icing, oh, I can't do his arms. I was going to put it behind now, but I don't think I should. Oh, they are close together, that's okay. It's not too bad. Now, if I use my Dresden tool to just make sure his head stays there, and I'm going to put some behind his arms again. Need some more behind his head, I think. Yes, I haven't put it high and up enough, so a bit more. All right, stay. <laughs> and then, yeah, it does look a bit... I've moved a little bit. It's very difficult with the angle and everything, so... There we go. Let me just have a look at him. Yeah, he's gone a bit um, lopsided there, so... I just need to push his arm down and his head in. Clean up a bit of icing that I can see. There we go. And that's it, I think. I can add a few more plants, make sure the church is standing up okay. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you like the cake and you can give it a go. Now you can see that it's not too difficult, although it looks very detailed. Thanks again. Bye.